Every Dollar Counts with Josh and Jay, a shot of true serum for your investment and insurance questions. I'm Josh Knoll, the owner of Gulf Coast Financial Advisors, and I'm joined by my co-host, Mr. Jay Stubbs, the Regional Director for First Protective. We are brought to you on the Prime Capital Investment Advisors Podcast Network. Now, Jay, we, we normally don't timestamp our podcast, but I think it's safe to say that we're really not in a normal situation right now, you think? No, no, Josh, we're not in normal times. Um, I'm getting used to a lot of different things, though, because we're going on about a month of this thing. That's right. Well, we are, we're going to timestamp this one. We're recording this episode on April 16th, 2020, in the midst of a COVID-19 pandemic and during a time of extreme market volatility and uncertainty. So as many of our listeners know, Jay and I decided weeks ago that we would attack this crisis to the best of our ability by pivoting the podcasts and our content to ideas and concepts that we felt could potentially help people navigate this crisis. So with that in mind, what you're tuning into is our leadership in a time of crisis series, where you're going to hear from people that I consider leaders and uh, that are also the executive level management of my RIA, Prime Capital Investment Advisors, joining us today. Is, uh, is someone with a tremendous multi-year background in executive leadership and leadership. Uh, his name is Glenn Spencer. He is the CEO of Prime Capital Investment Advisors. Uh, Glenn is going to walk through his, his path that led him to be a CEO of a large independent RIA. And he's also going to talk about the different brands and some of the things, some of the unique decisions facing him uh, as he's navigated his, he, him and his company through this crisis. Before we get into all that, though, let's have our friends from Sloth Racer kick. Us. Jay, Glenn, how y'all doing today? Josh, good to be with you on this podcast. Good to have Glenn on with us uh, again. Uh, we had him in studio last time. Now we get him through virtual Zoom. Yep. Glenn Spencer, how are you? I'm doing fine. Thanks for having me today, Josh. And congratulations on having such a, a successful show. Well, it's podcast, I should call it. We, we've had to put some time into it. You, uh, as, as Jay mentioned, you joined us on one of our earliest episodes. And uh, we were still kind of figuring out, we had the format of the show, but we were still figuring out what, how we were going to put our shoulder into it. Well, let me tell you, there's nothing like a crisis to, to put your shoulder into content creation right now. So we've had quite a, we've had a really phenomenal response. But back to you, Glenn, I want to talk about, you know, people that follow me and my network and follow this podcast have heard of Prime Capital Investment Advisors, but they might not understand that there's different brands and different uh, uh, companies underneath that. Would you mind to describe all the facets of Prime Capital? Sure. Um, Prime Capital Investment Advisors, LLC, is the holding company. I'm chief executive officer of that holding company. Uh, we have three primary brands or operating companies under Prime Capital Investment Advisors. Uh, Prime Capital Wealth Management, which is our individual investor and in wealth management business focused on the mass affluent. Qualified Plan Advisors is our retirement plan advisory firm, so we help companies medium to large size companies design their um, retirement uh, plans, 401k, 403b, defined contribution, um, and defined benefit plans. Uh, and then we have a business called Financial Fitness for Life, which provides um, participant education, employee or uh, retirement plan participant education services, data analytics around those education um, services. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we offer in, we have investment offerings contained within that business. So Financial Fitness for Life is a employee education, investment management, and data analytics firm, qualified plan advisors, retirement advisory, prime capital wealth management, individual wealth management advisory. Glenn, uh, can, you, can you give us a little a, a brief path uh, that led you to, to CEO and the, and the leadership that you that you're, uh, have today? Sure. Um, I, uh, I graduated college in the late eighties and went to work in the insurance business, went to work for an insurance company. Hey, I like that. I like that. <laughs> I quickly, I quickly, um, determined that that probably wasn't the best long-term path for me. Um, as I went out and started spending time, um, with clients and with, um, the agents and brokers that represented those clients, um, and really was attracted to the professional services industry got into that business um, through uh, a company called Johnson & Higgins, which was later acquired by Marsh, but 
got into the professional services side of the insurance business um, through those those companies and kind of worked my way up from sales, sales management, running offices, running regions, and basically stayed with um, Marsh companies uh, the bulk of my career until 2005 when I went to work for uh, the largest privately held insurance broker in the world, uh, Locked In, based in, uh, based in Kansas City. It's when I moved my family from Washington, D.C. to the Midwest, and I've been in Kansas City for 15 years now. Um, I joined Locked In as their um, U.S. Chief Operating Officer and ultimately became CEO of that organization. When I left, we had 7,000 plus um, employees and we were doing about a billion and a half in revenue. I joined um, Prime Capital um, in 2017, um, right after this firm was purchased from its prior ownership. I had relationships with um, our, some of my current partners here and um, was really attracted to the business, very similar um, to what, what we did at Lockton. Um, our retirement plan business here is, is, is perfectly kind of in sync with that. The wealth management side of the business is a little bit different, um, but still professional services um, firms. So I've been in a leadership role for 20 years at professional services firms. So it's a perfect platform to grow. Well, in that 20 years, you've, you've experienced uh, some, some turmoil. Uh, you've certainly had the rise and fall of, of the dot-com bubble and the 01 issues that we had. And then we had the, the 08, 09 uh, crises that, or crises that, that uh, brought everything to, to hilt. And now here we are, 2020, uh, experiencing yet another one. Um, I just got to gotta say, you know, were you ready for this? Uh, is it something that you were... Um, you know, mentally prepared for having given that history or did it catch you off guard any? Um, I'd say we were really well prepared as an organization. Um, I'd also say you're never perfectly prepared. No. Um, having been through 9-11 um, and the 2008-2009 financial crisis, um, those really were formative for me in um, being a prepared for this and then be dealing with it as we're, um, as we continue to work through it. Well, uh, kudos to you for having, uh, a little bit of thick skin, so to speak for what's going on right now. <laughs> Glenn, I want to, I want to jump in and ask you this. So the point of us putting together this podcast series was, uh, Jay and I both had communicated over the last several weeks and I've been kind of keeping him up to loop on some of the the things, the communication, the, the uh, decisions that have been coming from Prime Capital Investment Advisors, my, the, the RIA that I affiliate with. And it really became apparent that, uh, in my opinion, that you all, like you said earlier, there's, there's no perfect response to a crisis like this. I mean, no one saw this coming, but I do feel like you all had your feet underneath you. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on this podcast is, you know, what do you think led to the fact that Prime Capital Investment Advisors and its affiliated company were able to take this kind of really punch to the face of the whole industry and, and stay on their feet and keep moving forward. In fact, in fact, respond quickly. What do you think led to that? You know, I, I'd say that it starts with um, being prepared in advance, um, given the fact that you can't be perfectly prepared, as I said. So when I look at our business, um, we were really well prepared from a business continuity uh, perspective. Um, we had exercised our business continuity plans. Um, as with any kind of situation like this, we had to deal with um, a number of unforeseen issues, but we were prepared to work remotely on day one. All of our trading activities continued. Every uh, person inside of our company had remote access to um, their systems and their files. We had, um, we actually had um, um, remote front desk operations set up to answer phones for all of our offices. Um, so I'd say, you know, leading up to this, our business continuity plans were in really good shape. Um, in, in a situation like this, I think our internal, our ability to communicate internally with our people was in 
you know, what I would consider a really good order as well. And um, I think the area where we really had to um, um, uh, call audibles was in the external communication with our clients. Although we had been through 2008 and 2009, um, you know, in situations like this, uh, our clients are obviously, um, um, we need to be able to continue serving our clients' needs. Well, their needs go up, not down in these situations. And um, so I think we do a really good job as an organization in um, getting market advice, market education out there for our clients, getting them regular updates on um, legislative um, issues that may impact um, their companies. Um, so I think we, you know, we do a really nice job of that. But when you go from, from getting regular communications out on a, on a weekly and monthly basis to a daily and hourly basis, it, it, it just, you know, it taxes the system a little bit. Um, and, and I'd say, you know, we've gotten much better. I'd say that we coped with it for the first few days and we've gotten um, to where that's our regular rhythm right now. Yeah, we're all getting in a, in a rhythm of communication. Uh, I, I, myself, our company, First Protective, has had a number of web events, Zoom events, uh, conference calls. We've done everything from the 10-minute Tuesday uh, to the 30-minute Thursday. We've got one of those today on a little bit of extra training that we're doing in the risk management world. So I, I hear you loud and clear. Um, I, that's good for now. Um, do you envision keeping that game plan moving forward? Are you seeing some efficiencies there where you're going to say, you know what, we actually did that pretty well. Uh, we might adopt that after all this mess is over. Yeah, you know, that's a great point. Um, Jay, and I um, maybe take a step back and um, throughout this um, crisis, if you will, um, from my very first communication um, through, um, I sent an all firm com communication this morning. I've really stressed three things. Number one, health and safety of our people and our communities is, of, is number one. Um, serving our clients at a actually a higher level is our number two priority. And number three, uh, we want to be better as a business for having gone through this crisis. And that's really at sure. the crux of your question, Jay. And um, in every communication I've had, which has been every 24 to um, 48 hours, I've been trying to communicate internally with all of our folks. And then once a week with all of our clients, I've stressed those three things, health and safety, serve our clients, be better as a result of going through this. And I can point to a number of areas in our business where uh, we're significantly better because we've gone through, through this. We're communicating better with our clients. Our teams are actually collaborating more frequently and better and more effectively. We're using virtual communications technology like the one that we're on right now uh, for meeting after meeting. Our business continuity plans um, are, are um, much improved as a result of going through this. And when I look at the other side, um, we're gonna continue using some of the tools and resources um, that, that uh, we've come across accustomed to here to be more efficient as a business, but we've also identified efficiency um, opportunities in our business and have capitalized them while being in this working environment. Number one, I, you know, I, I raised earlier is our ability to get um, high quality communications uh, materials out to our clients in a really efficient and quick manner. That's going to serve us really well moving forward. Our ability to um, push that out on social media, we've improved. So, you know, I could probably point to 10 areas of our business um, just off the top of my head where we're going to be better and we're going to continue using those um, um, new tools, techniques, processes that, that we've refined through this process. All right. Think back 30 days. I want you to think real hard about this either A, something you learned how to do in the last 30 days that you're like, that's pretty damn cool, 
or B, something that you really loved doing and you definitely see uh, moving forward. It could be anything as simple as, uh, you know, stuff you're doing at home or, or with work or, or not even work. Um, so the coolest thing about this for me, I don't know if this is on point. You tell me if it is or not. The coolest all of it's on, yeah, it's all on point. <laughs> the coolest thing for me and something I think that's going to come out of this um, was the fact that I reconnected with my family in a really significant um, way. Um, I have a 26 year old uh, son who lives in Austin, Texas and a 21 year old daughter who lives in the greater Kansas city area here. And I have a 16 year old son and my uh, older children came home cause they didn't like working from apartments remotely. And so I've had all three of my kids here. Um, at my house working. Um, and, um, uh, we just been able to reconnect. Um, like maybe we never have uh, cooking meals together, uh, spending time, uh, after dinner. I mean, you can only watch so much of the news that you have to kind of disconnect from that and then reconnect as a family. Um, so I, uh, I, I think we had a, we have a great close knit family before this, but, um, you know, we've learned, um, that we could, have, we, we can do much better in that, in that arena. And I sure hope that we continue that, um, when this ends and, you know, uh, we need to get back to normal so that our economy can get moving again. Um, but I hope we can continue with some of this connection, um, that, uh, that maybe we, you know, we took for granted before and, and, and didn't appreciate uh, enough on the front end. So that would yeah. be, that would be it for me. Yeah, that, that's definitely cool stuff. We're doing the same thing here. Um, and, and I know Josh is, so the connectivity is going to be big moving forward, I think. Glenn, I got one. That's very well said, by the way, Glenn, I got one, one last thing uh, for you. The, um, as you, the, the, our listenership includes quite a few other advisors. Now that's both prime advisors and then just by the sheer nature of the fact that we're one of the few regional financial services based podcasts, we have a pretty large percentage of advisors that listen to us. You got any words of wisdom, both for, you know, maybe prime advisors that are going to be listening to this or potentially other advisors outside of there based on your 20 plus years of experience? Advice for the advisors? Yeah. Yeah. Words of, words of wisdom. Um, yeah. I think uh, because we're in a, a highly specialized area, this financial services area. Um, a lot of advisors um, end up getting to a point in their lives where their sort of technical expertise is, um, is what defines them. And um, what, what I think this business is really about is trust and relationships. It's a given that you have to be technically sound, technically good in your business. But I've had so many conversations in the last month with clients and advisors, and they just want a trusting voice, a friend on the other end of the line. Talk to so many of our advisors um, that have said they've had better conversations with their clients, deepening their relationships with their clients during this period of time. And it hasn't been about what should we do relative to the market. It's been about, um, you know, issues like I just talked about reconnecting with your family, but also, you know, business owners struggling with what to do with their employees and how do they communicate with their employees and do we have advice? So the advice kind of um, gets outside of um, our core business, which is financial services. And I think at the end of the day, that makes them better financial advisors. I'm back to, look, you got to be good at what you do, but use this as an opportunity to deepen the relationships, which will end up making you a better financial advisor in the end. Yeah, that's very well said. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start wrapping it up. I know you've got yet another webinar to, go, to get on to. <laughs> I, 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 uh, Glenn, I do want to say this just as a little chuckle, and Jay will, will like this. If you look back in your archives at a marketing plan I sent you going on probably nine months ago in uh -huh. there, I, in there, I said, Hey Glenn, 
Uh, I think this Zoom thing might be a thing at some point. I, I really want to spend some time on it and try to figure it out. Well, to be honest with you, I never did until this crisis hit. And then here we are, right? Living think, on Zoom. I think this format is a lot better than sitting in the studio with the headset on. Oh. Um, I think this is going to be, I, I think this is going to be a hit. Yeah, uh, we're going to get you back in there, man. There's, you can't, you can't, uh, you got to have some deep fried in your veins. So yeah, I'll do well, it. Well, all right. So listeners, if you'd like to reach out to the show, you can text or call 251-327-2124. Plus you can always visit gulfcoastfa.com or pciawealth.com. There you can find all of our contact info, our bios, and you can hear this podcast and any of our other podcasts. Uh, also, if you want to reach out to Jay Stubbs, you can find him at J-A-Y-S-T-U-B-B-S.com. That's jstubbs.com. So first, uh, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, Glenn, I want to thank you for coming on. I know you had one more thing you wanted to say, so I want to turn, the, turn it back over to you. You saw my number one come up, right? Yes, I did. I'm just going to add um, for all your listeners out there that if you go to PCIAWealth.com, we have a COVID-19 section, which has all kinds of videos, archived documents, but, if, but for any individual or retirement plan that wants to know um, what are the issues that I should be thinking about relative to this specific crisis that we're in the middle of right now, there's just a wealth of information there. So I would... I would encourage him to go visit that. Perfect. So uh, listeners, that was Glenn Spencer, the CEO of Prime Capital Investment Advisors. We want to thank him for coming and joining us on the podcast today. Also want to thank our producer, Johnny Gwynn. He is the Bond villain you see up in the left-hand corner of your screen if you're watching this on video, uh, Deep Fried Studios. Thank my co-host, Jay Stubbs. And then, as always, a huge shout out to all of y'all that have joined Jay and I on this journey and to those who are joining us now, and then really, lastly, a special thanks to the people in the medical field and the healthcare industry that are really on the front lines of all this, the doctors, the nurses, the LPNs, the RNs, the ones that are walking in into the lion's den and, and facing down this, uh, this virus. Much, much respect to you all, and thank you for what you're doing. You're, you're doing things that uh, you know, we, we wish we could do, but we're trying to do what we can and help people navigate through with leadership and, and financial issues. So all that said, thank you all for joining us. This has been Every Dollar Counts with Josh and Jay. Thanks.